Hey folks, it's JD here, and look, we are out. We've got the Phantom 3 with us. Beautiful. We are all pretty much set up, ready to go, almost. I've just got to finish calibrating this, this compass. And then that's it, then we'll be ready to take to the beautiful grey skies that we have here today. So, yeah, before I go any further, when I went to go on, to put on to the... Uh, the propellers. It's just important to remember that you have got a little device to help you in the operation. Uh, I thought they were on tight. I used this then just to hold the motors and just tighten it a little bit more and I found out there was a little bit of wiggle room in each propeller. So I'm lucky that I had that if I'm honest. So there we go. We've got the SD card already in the camera. We've got pretty much everything sorted. We should have a full battery. Yet yeah, we do. So all we've got to do now is just calibrate the compass. This is where we're at. We're pretty much at the uh, point where we should be able to calibrate now. So just to have a look what it says on the controller and then just to calibrate away. Twirl the, the phantom around. That's calibration one's complete now. Now for number two. Put the camera and the gimbal facing down and then twist. This is a little bit more tricky. And now we should have, yeah, there we are. Calibration is a success. So as you can see, there's nothing on the, on the screen there at all now. So we have got GPS, nine satellites. Uh, we are fully connected, 88% battery. Unfortunately, it has taken me a while to get to this calibration state. This particular app, the DJI Go app, kept on thinking I had an Inspire, not a uh, Phantom 3. So as it went for it, I had to uninstall, clear the cache, go back through and reinstall everything and then set everything back up uh, from standard. So let's flip to put on the video. Now you can see the viewfinder is altered a bit. Let's click to start recording. There we are, recording is up. Let's take to the skies then. We are ready to fly. Here we go. So aircraft will take off. It'll get to round about one meter in height. I've just moved it on a bit just because these brushless motors, as I'm sure you're aware, are extremely loud. So there we have it. So she's up, she's handling pretty well. She's pretty steady. I mean, there's a little bit of movement. Uh, this is to be expected, same as we have with a lot of the other GPS quadcopters that we've looked at. Obviously, if it gets too bad, then I'll bring it down and we'll have to recalibrate the compass uh, and just go from there, to be honest with you. But I'm pretty happy. There's a little bit of a breeze here today. It's not much. I mean, we're looking at 8.3 degrees Celsius. And for the second, there is no breeze that is actually being registered on here. But I can feel that there is something. So there we are. Right, so then, let's have a quick little look at this gimbal. So if I take her forward a little bit and then spin her around. So this is the whole, one of the main great things about this particular, uh, about, well, about the Phantom range is their gimbal. Now, this gimbal, as you'll notice, as I rock side to side, the gimbal stays completely straight. That is the point of a gimbal, is that it takes, it makes sure that the camera is always pointing straight, always pointing forward so that you get the best shots you can. You're not going to have any of the quadcopter banking from left to right or anything like that. So as you move across, if you look at the, the screen that's in front of you now, you'll see the video is pretty much as solid as it gets. So there we have it. I mean, it's, even from the back, you can see if I move side to side, that gimbal, you can see the gimbal moving, but the lens stays very, very straight. This is a fantastic quadcopter. I mean, the whole Phantom range are just spectacular. Uh, they really are. Uh, the Phantom 4 I flew a couple of weeks ago. That, well, I, that was the first Phantom I had ever flown, so pretty much I'm going backwards uh, down the timeline from the Phantom 4 through to the Phantom 3. And I find that it's just as fun. It's just as nice. Um, the <laughs> That's the one thing, the air brake. As soon as you let go, you see the quadcopter just pulls itself back. Let me show you. See? <laughs> I love that air brake. We saw that in the Phantom 4 and it stops on a dime. It really does. It is a spectacular, um, spectacular brake. 
This particular Phantom doesn't have a sport mode, however it does manage to get up to astonishing speeds of 27 miles an hour. I mean here you can see, I'm just flying around normally, this is at least half accelerate, uh, half throttle. It's not all the way down and it is just chomping up the air, look at it go, I mean it's, it's loving life. But the whole point and a lot of the reason that people buy Phantoms is for that amazing camera. So the camera that we have inside this today is the 2.7K model. Let's see what have we got in the park here today. Let's have a little look. So we just slowly pan around. Doesn't look to be anybody there. Looks to be actually pretty empty to be, to be totally honest with you. Okay, let's take her out a little bit. So as you can see as you're flying her out, I mean this is tremendous. The video that you're getting from it, again, is totally stable, 100% accurate. I mean, I don't know if you can see now if I... If I I'm over here. <laughs> but it is just a, a fantastic, fantastic quadcopter. I did find that setting up the DJI app and getting the compass calibration and everything else, that was a complete nightmare. So it goes from quite a bad experience to a absolutely fantastic experience which to be honest now that I'm up in the air now that I'm calibrated now that we're all uh, we're all singing all dancing I'm willing to completely forget the whole uh, debacle with the DJI Go app and just carry on you know just loving life <laughs> using this fantastic piece of uh, piece of equipment so we're looking at 10 satellites a total distance covered of um, 16.1 meters, a height of 6.6 .6 meters. There we are. So we're looking at quite, <laughs> quite a, uh, quite a spectacular, spectacular device. I mean, you can see the refinements now that I, I've been, I've flown the four, and I've gone back and I've flown the three. I can really appreciate the differences that they, that they have, uh, or the changes they've made in the three. Um, and I gotta be honest, it is, the changes that they've made have been quite subtle, but I think they were completely warranted. Like one of them is on this transmitter, and I'll show you when I come to land uh, this particular quadcopter, is as soon as you pull it down, you have a, a, a stopping point, and then you have a click point, where the engines just cut out. Now that's, you know, that could be quite dangerous. I think that's why they've taken it away from the four, um, because I found when I was doing the unboxing and when I was having a good fiddle with the quadcopter uh, to ensure that I knew exactly how to fly it before taking it out, I did find that a little bit disconcerting, I've got to be honest. Now another thing, one thing I noticed with the Phantom 4, and again with the Phantom 3, does it spectacularly. Look at the battery, I don't know how well this is going to come out on my Mobius, but the battery, I can see the LEDs on the back so I can see that we've got three LEDs left so I know that the battery is about halfway halfway done uh, and well as I look on the uh, on the transmitter we are at 50% exactly let's bring her down so I'm just going to turn her around so the camera is facing the sheds in front of us I'm just going to position her a bit and then I'm going to bring her down look at that descent now that is three quarters throttle down and then when we get to the bottom it'll adjust itself and then we just click it into place now that is the clicker I was on about so you go from there to there and there's not much of and there's not much leeway I got to be honest but in saying that that was a negative side and I do think that is quite a dangerous thing um, when I was flying not once did I ever come close to clicking it in so there is a you know another side of that as well so this gimbal is operated by this shoulder button here so this shoulder button allows you to operate the gimbal by rolling the shoulder button down the gimbal moves down and by rolling the sh the the roll up the gimbal goes back into its normal alignment that is as far as the gimbal will go is at that particular straight angle but don't let that deter you, uh, because you can get a wide variety of shots, uh, as I'm sure you would have already seen from the video footage that we've had. So these brushless motors really are loud, but you do get a lot of power from them. They will last you a lot longer. I mean, I couldn't imagine a quadcopter of this size, weight, 
all power using brushed motors it would just be ridiculous you'd be replacing them every five minutes so it's really good that they have used something such as these brushless motors so all these tight twists and tight turns I'm doing and all of these tight corners I'm, I'm taking and these sudden stops where you can hear the quadcopters really having to struggle against the the wind to change direction there and the gimbal and the video is just so straight it's unbelievable that's the whole point one of the reasons I'm doing this is just to show how this gimbal works it doesn't matter if you're flying really nice and really straight or if you're flying like a crazy madman uh, obviously I wouldn't recommend that but <laughs> But it is nice to put the gimbal through its paces as well, just to see how it uh, how it reacts. So even low flying is something that it can do really well as well. I mean, normally because of the, all the downdraft that you're going to get from flying so low, quadcopters become really unstable. Not the Phantom. It just it laps up pretty much anything you can throw at it. I'm really putting this through its paces today, and uh, yeah, it's just handling everything. So there are loads of features you can use with the Phantom 3 as well. There are things like return to home, auto land. Oh, we've got a low battery in the quadcopter. We're at 30%. Uh, so obviously I'm not, I don't want to take it any further than that. Otherwise it'll automatically trigger the return to home. You can see the LED status in the back of the quadcopter has changed. They're all flashing red now. So, or oh, the back two are flashing red, sorry. So... Let's have a look at that battery indicator. Yeah, down to one bar. Okay, so the quadcopter now won't fly. She is. Uh, she won't go every time I try and take her up because the battery is low. This is a fantastic fail-safe feature. She does just bring herself down and she does land. So, what I'm going to do is just turn around to me and then we're going to land her. So let's bring her down and then once she hits the floor, that's it then, just terminate its motors they cut out straight away no problem there we are fantastic well there we have it folks the phantom 3 standard uh, as we saw today we looked at a lot of the features of the phantom it has got a couple of others one of them that sticks in my memory is a follow me the follow me function where as you walk around the quadcopter will follow every direction that you turn every movement you make uh, just making sure you get the best shots you possibly can so that is one of the features that we didn't look at today but uh, we will once we've got once we're in an area which is a little bit bigger than this little paddock here I didn't want to be uh, using that and finding out that the quadcopter couldn't turn or it gave me too much of a wide berth and then would crash into the sides so there we go <laughs> so overall just oh, such a great experience I mean the Phantom uh, the Phantom range uh, have been synonymous with quadcopters for years uh, I think for over 10 years now and uh, the Phantom 3 standard is no different um, now this is a great time to buy the Phantom 3 unfortunately the Phantom 3 and the Phantom 4 have now been discontinued continued by DJI but that doesn't mean that they're not worth bothering with not at all I mean I bought mine a couple of days ago I mean now you're gonna find them with some great reductions two or three hundred uh, pounds off so there's never been a better time in my eyes than to buy one now and really experience what everybody is uh, is experiencing out there uh, and yeah it's it's it works like a charm i mean this quite this gimbal is just astounding the video footage we captured today was still you couldn't see anything any banking side to side everything just looked as if it was being filmed straight forward just such a a fantastic uh, such a really good quadcopter indeed uh, so we're gonna download the flight plan as well when, when I get home we're gonna have see if I can make a head and a tail of that and uh, I'll put that up on the blog and up on the website as well just so that uh, if you are interested you can go and check it out uh, hopefully it'll be up there <laughs> um, now as soon as I download it I'll, I'll stick it up there and uh, and there we are yeah so we we with the calibration that took a little bit longer uh, the DJI app I had to reinstall that because it was taking an absolute age and it thought that I had an Inspire not a standard uh, not a Phantom um, so I lost a little bit of battery power there so when I first took off I think I was at about 83% um, but still we had a good 20 minutes up in the air and yeah it's just, just just a dream come true absolutely fantastic just especially to own one um, so yeah I mean a couple of other things which I didn't mention before be careful with the landing sprigs the antenna is in there as you will see um, so it's a nice way nice way to conceal it you see there's one in the front and one in the back well there we are folks Thanks ever so much for watching and listening. I've been JD, you've been fantastic as always. Uh, so if, 
if you haven't already don't forget to subscribe uh, that just gives you a uh, just, just notifies you when my videos get posted three videos a week once on a Monday once on a Wednesday and once on a Saturday uh, and also don't forget if you have enjoyed and if you have liked this just give us a thumbs up that would be fantastic so thanks ever so much folks so until so until next time happy flying